Um, okay, on the feedback, actually I forgot to mention, uh, as part of the requirement by law, we had to do three months of public feedback uh, on that line. Um, it was displayed uh, in seven places. I think. There were plenty of suggestions and comments, and all of those actually were analyzed. And that translated into a few refinements. We actually had changed quite a bit in terms of uh, positioning. We avoided some of the houses, uh, land acquisition we avoided. Actually, in Kajang, even change it so that it doesn't go into the town. We had to probably uh, rebuild a stadium. But, <laughs> but we did take all that into consideration. But in really, it boils down to you know, costs and benefits and what it means to the greater good. Um, I know many places ask for, for it to be underground and actually even though the cost is between somewhere between uh, three to eight times more than having it above ground, actually we are still taking it as, as an option and presenting it to the PM uh, so that he can make a final decision. So we're not ruling everything out or we're not ruling anything out. So all of those feedback did not go to waste. Second question about failures. This is a bit... Uh, to say we study failures, I, I wouldn't say that we, we, we study enough. Because the focus is more on how to make it successful. I know you need to understand what we, other people fail as well. but. When we go to Hong Kong, when we go to Singapore, they don't really like to talk about failures. <laughs> but, point taken, uh, but our problem is a bit different than Singapore. Uh, we had to provision enough parking spaces because our city is much more dispersed and, and people need to get to, you know, we need to provide, at least in some areas where feeder services might not be adequate. We need to provide for park and rec facilities. About um, cash card or what we're calling smart, uh, smart cashless uh, ticketing, that is something that we are pushing very hard um, to be used everywhere. And actually, since Touch and Go has been acquired by CIMB, they have gone and convinced the government that they will put all the necessary investments to make sure that that happens. So, we are crossing our fingers to make sure that that happens and watching it like a hawk. Okay. And I promise you we will do something if it doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm just going to <laughs> so, good evening. My name is Azdan from uh, the ECOs. I have uh, just, uh, just a simple question. So, based on your presentation on MRT, I haven't heard anything. Uh, how much MRT can improve in terms of uh, urban expenses? Let's say, let's say I'm a young executive, and uh, let's say in five, years, five, six years from now, when MRT actually start to uh, be running. Let's say I have to rent a house near MRT station and uh, apparently the rent will be high and then uh, is the MRT ticket going to be just as expensive if I drive my car to work plus let's say if I don't live near MRT station I go to the park and ride station is it the parking fee is going to be expensive plus the MRT ticket and then at the end of the day it's still cheaper to drive mm -hmm. or it doesn't really improve they probably improve my traveling time, but I'm still going to spend a lot on uh, facilities. Okay, I, I didn't touch on the numbers because uh, it's six years away. Uh, but what I want to stress on is that our interests are completely aligned. Meaning, if the MRT is not attractive enough for you to use, my KPI will not be achieved. 
if I don't get, if I don't deliver fifty percent motor share by, I don't know if I'm going to be here that long, but I must put processes in place to deliver fifty percent motor share by by then. The organisation would have failed. So, uh, but interestingly enough, the fair will be completely ruled by staff. So you can rest assured that staff will make sure that the fare is affordable enough so that people will ride on it. So if it fails to achieve that model share. <laughs> so it is in Spice's interest to make sure that that happens, to make sure that it's affordable, the parking, park and ride facilities are affordable as well as it encourages people to use MRT. Um, there will also be uh, incentives so that if you change modes in order to get to where you want to go, there will be discounts. You can use or we can use um, uh, based on distance based fare instead of modal based. So all of these things we have time to, to design within the next five to six years. But our intention is to bet to have the best system possible for the people. And the lives this is after all, this is what we're talking about. This is why we're here. The idea is to help improve lives. Lifestyle, uh, discretionary income. Because um, for the pain that I'm going through now, it's just not worth it if, <laughs> if that's not my goal. Because uh, what we are foreseeing is together with the property players, there will be huge scale of affordable housing that will be built along the MRT line as well. You know the Prime Minister's uh, goal to create uh, a sizable stock of affordable housing. And we will use part of this for that. So if, you know, in line with, with trying to bring move our, uh, our economy to a high income country uh, using more skill, knowledge, uh, profession. We're talking about having clusters of necessary institutions along the MRT line. So for instance, if you work, uh, for currently if you work in the middle of KL, it takes you about two hours to go anywhere. Chances are, you know, there's very little you can do in terms of improving your lives. It'll be a huge pain if you want to take night classes, for instance. You would have to leave early from your office in order to get to, uh, to say, UN, for instance. But what we are envisioning, there will be clusters of campuses around MRT where you can get from your office, 20 minutes later, you're already in class. So opportunities to upgrade your skills, to get masters, even PhDs, is much, much more reachable. So this is what we are trying to deliver for you. My name is Suhana from Petronas. So sorry I had to grab the mic only because I just drove from Pasir Kudang to be here. <laughs> um, okay, um, so far I've, I've listened to two big things. Why we need MRT and secondly in terms of the execution of the project we've talked about construction up to pre-commissioning. Sorry, commissioning. But I'm quite interested to listen to the operational side of it, post-commissioning. Um, we know that there's, there's been a lot of problems with LRT in terms of breaking down, etc. And usually once the project is up and running, once it's in operational mode, a lot of times you see people cuci tangan lah. So, I mean, I don't know whether this is under your school, but how do you address efficiency of MRT? And I don't know, because we've been talking about KPI a lot lately, so is there a specific KPI in terms of the execution of the MRT? Okay, um, 
the key lesson that we learned with the LRT implementation was that when it started, it was conceived and planned as a private project. So, and there was no authority then. The government was rushing for, for I think it was ASEAN Games or Commonwealth Games. I wasn't here. I wasn't here, sorry. Yeah, for Commonwealth Games. And it was given to private sector to, to, to build. And they just built it for speed in, ter in terms of construction. Very little was, uh, was put in for operations, as you rightly pointed out. But things are different now. Now we have an authority. And we have an operator with experience, which is why we Early enough, we designate that they will be the operator, so that aspects of operations will be incorporated into the design, which is what's happening now. So Prasanna is supposed to use their wealth of experience in running LRT. They are supposed to um, put all this into what we call employer's requirement. They have done that. Just to be sure, We've also engaged MTR Corporation of Hong Kong to review the DR, and that is about to be finalized. So, considerations for operations are already incorporated into the design to answer the question. Even things like how much energy we use if it's using, if it goes 4% gradient, that's why we minimize it, make sure that it's not more than 3.5%. All of these things are incorporated into the design. The next question, please state your name and organization. Hi, uh, I'm Ernest, uh, the head of uh, business uh, development for TA Global Bahad. Um, what, uh, I mean, as a, as a property developer, um, we, uh, we are looking at um, the Koto Daman Sarayu as the next growth area, and we are talking about uh, affordable housing. The area around there is not very affordable anymore. So when you put an affordable housing into that area, the prices will naturally shoot up. Uh, how do you um, reconcile that? Um, also, uh, places that are, I mean, I, I see you there's a missing link, you know, you go all the way down to uh, Putra Heights, but you don't go across the Cyber Jaya, which is where all the knowledge workers are. Um, so, you know, people staying around that area can't go that easily. You have to go take maybe an ERL or a, Hill Central then come down, so it's it's quite a hassle as well that we um, is there something to address that as well? Uh, so those those are the two main ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. In terms of uh, property appreciation, in some respect, we want it to go up so that um, the owners who are shrewd enough and lucky enough to invest will see returns from this investment and that will be turned into other economic activities and will translate into economic multiplier. But we want to preserve uh, affordability in some parts. So I can imagine I can imagine that in Singapore where they created HDB scheme uh, we may explore something like that. And we may even explore certain percentage of uh, number of units that would be not be sold but would be brand controlled or something like that. But it's difficult to, to stop appreciation. On the sorry I forgot what you said a second. Um missing link between side oh, okay. and the, the the thing about rail is that it is very, very expensive per kilometer. So, from, uh, but you're referring to LRT. the LRT line extension to Putra Heights. But between Putra Heights and Cyberjaya, there's many, many kilometers of empty space. So, for a system to be economically viable, you cannot have that. You need population catchment every kilometer to make sure that there's enough ridership to fit the system. If you have 
you know, 10, 20 kilometers of empty space is going to be extremely expensive to, to, to run. But Especially then, if, if, if you're controlling the fare so that it's affordable. <laughs> but then again, uh, if you look at Kepong and Puchong, you don't touch those areas which are uh, a very good catchment area as well. Yeah. Puchong, Puchong will be served by the land extension from Ampang side. Um, Kepong, we are looking at that will be reviewed in the urban de rail development plan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Trying to trick me. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm William from SSM Management, a property company. I have two questions uh, regarding the land and development around MRT. First is, you mentioned in the slide that um, one of the ways to 